I want to go to some phone calls and get their take and then your response to it. But um, what about a year and a half ago, our own military saying we're not going to support bombing Assad for Al Qaeda and then them trying to change the name to ISIS to confuse the public and Turkey's bombing the Kurds as they beg for help against ISIS. Uh, that's blowing up in their face. I mean, there's just so much good news. It's the best of times, worst of times, like Tale of Two Cities, though. It is, and the military is still conflicted. I mean, the U.S. government is afraid of its veterans because the veterans have paid the supreme sacrifice. They have done their job. They've come home. They're disillusioned. They know they've been lied to, and they're armed and dangerous. Um, you got a bunch of cowardly corporate lawyers that love the military enforcing their edicts but, but are scared of them. Yes. What I see happening here is the veterans... The young college kids, the older guys like myself that are unemployed but want to work, uh, and the soccer moms, I see us all coming together. But what we're, miss what we're missing is a catalyst. Ebola is an excellent precipitant for the public coming together, but we're still missing some kind of catalyst that actually brings us together in a, in a manner much more effective than Occupy with its waggling fingers. And that's something uh, and like that's a woman torturing herself on the, on the, in front of the White House <laughs> of the Capitol. Alex, I expected you to set that up after I mentioned it the first time. <laughs> we haven't found the volunteer yet, and we better watch it. Somebody does it, they'll blame it on us. We hope that doesn't happen. I mean, is there something well, other than that that's a precipitant that isn't so hard? Horrid? Uh, or the tree of liberty's got to be watered? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I certainly believe in nonviolence. I, I really would love to see an occupation of the home offices of every senator and representative for the next two weeks. And I would like to see them forced to sign a pledge to pass the Electoral Reform Act that reopens the elections to all of us, not just the two-party tyranny. That, for me, would be a good start. And I agree that Ebola is not a major threat to the country, but the incompetence of the government is. So well, sure, it's an indicator. It's is, an indicator of how out of control they are. Yes, and electoral reform is how we restore the integrity of the U.S. government. That's the one thing we should all be able to agree sure. on. Sure, I just don't know if you get folks excited about that, even though I agree it's, it's key. They may get excited enough to go storm peacefully the offices of senators and congresspeople to point out that there's a stand down going on with the strike. The article's on Infowars.com, stop a bullet strike, hashtag national strike to force Obama to block West African flights. Let's go to one call before we go to break. Let's talk to Frank in New York. You're on the air with our guest, Robert David Steele. Go ahead. Good evening. How are you? Good. Go ahead. Um, basically, I just want to say something right now. Um, this Antichrist president that we have, I think he's really pulling orders from Satan himself, basically. Because how can you allow people to come to this country knowing they have Ebola? I, I, it, it just infuriates me to no end. I'm very pissed off about this. Well, I think, I think what Steele said is true. Obama knows he's a complete puppet. But when you actually don't empower government people to have any power and it's all bureaucracy and all corporate interest, then it begins to manifest itself and then the whole illusion implodes. Uh, well, let me, let, me, let me tar and feather John Kerry, our Secretary of State. Um, John Kerry gave up his integrity long ago. Uh, but one of, the, one of the things he did that I consider treason was burying the Iran-Contra investigation. Oh, yeah. John Kerry ignored letters from Gary Hart and from pilots, uh, Plumlee and many others, and he buried that investigation because he was asked to bury it by the two-party tyranny. So from where I sit, John Kerry has no business being Secretary of State, and he is, in fact, a primary um, reason why we are not acting responsibly. For instance, we should have hospital ships off of the coast of West Africa. Sure. We should have the 30-minute test mandated for anyone coming through um, through Europe from West Africa before they get on a plane. Just like Homeland Security can check everybody that gets on a plane before the plane takes off, there's no reason why we can't do well, that. Well, exactly. Test. Grabbing my testicles is pointless. Checking me for Ebola if I'm coming from an Ebola country is totally reasonable. No one would complain about that. But the key thing, Alex, is there's a test that takes 30 minutes. It can be done at the airport. So you get there early. It's a test that exists that the U.S. government is not requiring. There you go. We're going to go to break and come back and go to some final calls, uh, Michael and uh, Daryl and Gabe and Pam and others.
Uh, again, you've got two websites, and they're both very interesting. Tell us the difference between the two different sites. Well, the, the BigBatUSA.org is from my, my very short presidential campaign, and it's where all the ideas are that I hope someone like Jim Webb will actually pay attention. Anyone who does not look at a coalition government electoral reform and so forth is not going to get elected president. I'll tell you about the other one next time. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? Robert David Steele is our guest. Honored to have him here with us today. Appreciate him spending so much time with us. We're going to hit a bunch of your phone calls here right at the end. Briefly, we have InfoWarsLife.com, the most revolutionary, but a lot of it's really simple. High quality, survival shield, X2, nascent iodine, a colloidal silver, uh, silver bullet, super male vitality, super female vitality, all of it. Is just the most purified, high-quality, hardcore stuff out there that's been known to get really great results. You've heard the great reviews. Your purchase supports the broadcast. Check out InfoWarsLife.com today. It's what I'm personally using to bolster my body's natural defenses. I'm not really worried about Ebola in the final equation like I am all the MRSA and the rest of it. And since I've been taking these products that scientists and researchers and doctors and you name it, developed, it, it's really changed my life and helped fund our operation. So thank you all for your support, whether it's DNA Force, Oxy Powder, Fluoride Shield, Survival Shield X2, uh, all of it, Lung Cleanse, it's all available at InfoWarsLife.com. And you can get the Beyond Tangy Tangerine other products at InfoWarsHealth.com as well, and it's excellent. Uh, going back to Robert David Steele uh, here today, taking some calls. Let's talk to Michelle who wants to comment on hospitals, she says, are volunteering to take Ebola patients. I've seen that in the news as well. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Um, yeah, we have some hospitals here. Um, Columbia, uh, Charleston, and Greenville. Um, they are all offering uh, Ebola help, basically. Um they, they don't have the negative pressure rooms that are required. So, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why. Well, I mean, that's why I'm freaking out. I'm no medical doctor, but they had all these facilities with these pressurized rooms and BioShield and hundreds of billions spent in the last 15 years. Mr. Steele, that's my big issue. It's not just incompetence at some level. Why would they send Ebola patients? Why do they have people loading the Ebola patient nurse uh, last week on a plane not wearing hazmat suits? What's going on? Why was, she, why was she on a commercial plane to begin with? Why wasn't she on a special flight? Um, it, it really is quite astonishing. I think the public has a right to be very, very angry. Um, CDC and NIH are not telling the truth in part because they don't actually know what the truth is. Just like the president's so-called czar that's not a health professional. Most CDC and NIH leaders may have once studied health, but they have been bureaucrats for the last 30 years and they've forgotten what it's like to actually care for the public. That's it, you just hire a bunch of lawyers and PR people and they start smoking their own dope. Pam in Texas, I've got a lot of news articles about people canceling their vacations. I don't think that's needed at this point, but if it keeps spreading, it may be. What's your take on that, Pam? Alex, I just have to say I adore you. I know you're really busy, but we love you. Um, I wanted to tell you, I am a medical doctor. I finished my training about 10 years ago, which was before the government started really taking over medical training and basically dumbing down doctors to not think but to only follow protocol. Anyways, my family was planning on taking, uh, buying five tickets this month to fly in United. And um, I just absolutely will not fly right now. And I, I had given up faith in my congressman for sure. So I said, I'm just going to call United directly and let them know that I've canceled our flight. Because maybe it's the public pressure, you know, if they see it hitting their wallet. So I called and I spoke to the lady. She was extremely nice. And she said, let me read you a, a memo that our company, meaning United, put out to us. So she, she looked at the memo, she found it, she started reading it to me. And basically what the memo said was that United was telling its employees that Ebola is totally under control, that there's nothing to be concerned about whatsoever. 
And I explained to the lady, you know, basically, um, I've got a medical background, and these are the facts. You know, we went through the incubation period, 2 to 21 days. What happens if a guy gets on the plane at day 4 and is totally asymptomatic, screening procedures, nothing. And the lady was obviously very concerned, um, but I thought it was just horrific that she's reading me this thing that United gave them that said that there's no risk. And I Oh, yeah, they've got their her. propaganda together. And there wouldn't be a risk if they did the screening and paid attention, but because they say, because they believe their BS is God and is reality, that's why there's the danger. Amazing points. Pam, you ought to write an article about that. We publish it, uh, you know, as a medical doctor giving their view on the on the PR. Thank you, Pam. Uh, Mr. Steele, what's your take on what she just said? Well, I'm, I'm reminded of how everybody was lied to by George Bush after 9-11 when he told everyone to go back into New York City and, and there the was... The is good for you. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And breathing asbestos is, is wonderful. The fact is the U.S. government has gotten away with telling lies for, for centuries, but more so than ever in the last 50 years. And it's time for the public to start demanding the truth on every point. I agree with you. I mean, look, in third world countries, if, a, if an agency head screws up, they get fired or arrested. And so they don't want to screw up here. It's like you screw up, you get increased funding. Well, that's going to cause more screw-ups. I, I really agree with your previous caller. The time has come for the public to start putting economic pressure on everybody. Uh, I personally am planning to fly to Los Angeles on the 6th of November. Uh, but I do think it's absolutely irresponsible for the government to not be screening. In fact, someone just vomited in the Pentagon parking lot the other day, and she had been in West Africa. Um, I don't know what else to say other than that people should be sitting in their congressman's office saying, look, fool, I'm going to come vomit on you if you don't get to start taking this seriously. Take it serious. I think that's the, the new hashtag. Take a bowl of serious. Hashtag. Or just serious. <laughs> or how about hashtag truth? Uh, absolutely. Uh, let's jam in a few more here. Gabe in North Carolina, you're on the air. Or North Dakota, I'm sorry, I read it wrong. Go ahead, you're on the air. Mr. Mr. Jones, because you seek the truth, I have a message for you. Okay. The message is this. It has begun. A warning has been given in the heavens, lest no man may boast of sending this signal. The sun shall be darkened, and the moon two more times shall not give its light and turn to blood. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. Well, that's a creepy phone call. You know, I think the government's non-response is the real indicator of how much trouble we're in, like, like Mr. Steele's saying. Uh, but uh, you got any comments on that, Steele? Well, I, I, I'm not so sure. Well, the apocalypse, first off, can be interpreted in, in at least two ways. And I, I lean toward the, the more fruitful, optimistic way, which is that light comes and, and we, we reinvent ourselves in God's uh, image and, and we become a heaven on earth. Uh, Absolutely. So I'm, a, I'm a positive person. Uh, I believe the U.S. government is getting to the point where it's going to melt down so completely that the public decides that it has to take matters into its own hands. And that will be a good thing for America. I agree. At the state and county level, people getting back to reality. Last caller we have time for. Sorry, the others. Daryl in North Carolina, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Um, I found a PDF from the Center for Aerobiological Sciences at the U.S. Army Research Institute of Infectious Disease at Fort Detrick, Maryland. It said Ebola has an aerosol stability that is comparable to influenza A and that basically all it needs is winter type conditions yes. to maximize its aerosol. That is so bombshell. So Army document, and I, and I still obviously knows about it. Army document says Ebola could be airborne in the winter. Will you send that document right now to uh, whistleblowers at Infowars.com? Yeah. Well, and we'll, also we'll, tell us the name again. Sorry, Robert, go ahead. No, well, I would just I would just like your viewers to know that at phibetaiota.net, we we have Ebola as a trending item. And for the Alex Jones show, I had several of my editors put together some of the top headlines. And one of those headlines is that not only has Ebola been shown to go airborne uh, among animals, but it is also known to survive outside the host under cold conditions. Well, it's clearly spreading very fast now. So you're saying cold weather in this army document makes it stronger. No, it, uh, it survives. Well, it allows, well, I mean, allows it to live longer. Yeah, yeah.
it survives outside the host, okay? CDC does not want to admit this. CDC is being treasonously, maliciously... Well, it's clearly spreading it's longer now. It's, uh, sir, sir, what's the name of that Army document again? I'm going to look it up right now. C caller? He's gone? Well, well, we'll go back to the tape and find that because, uh, he, wow, that's amazing. But uh, there's an article There's an article about that very point at Phi Beta Iota under the... What's the name of the article? We'll, we'll, we'll look it up. See if you can find the name of it, okay, Robert? I Not right now. No, I understand. We're out of time. I understand. We're on air. All right, well, that's it for the show. We'll find the article. We'll get it up on Infowars.com. That was an amazing final statement. Thank you, Mr. Steele. Thank you, Alex. We'll be back tomorrow live, 11 a.m. Central, Lord Welling, 11 a.m. Central. Stopping this disease won't be easy, but we know how to do it. Fighting Ebola, the president says a travel ban won't work. So why are so many countries doing it? A national strike is the answer. I'm wearing the same shirt I was when I was in the car with that uh, family. There is zero risk. I said it. There it is. I shouldn't say that. There's no risk. If there were any risk, uh, I would not uh, expose myself or my family. A national strike will force Obama and the federal government to secure the borders and stop West African flights. A travel ban is less effective than the measures that we are currently instituting. I have a question for you. Do you want to end up like West African countries that are in a stage of panic and total collapse with the UN estimating that over a million people will end up getting Ebola by December? We are calling for a nationwide strike starting next Monday through Wednesday for you to stay home, especially if you're medical workers, police, EMTs that are going to be hardest hit by this, to draw attention to the fact that the federal government is on strike and not doing its default job allowing these flights to come in. Even the Speaker of the House has said stop the flights. Senator Ted Cruz, Rand Paul, Governor Jindal of Louisiana, but not President Obama, he's out defending this. Now remember, it was someone flying in from Africa that brought it here, now spreading to nurses and clearly others. Why do they want it here? To create a bigger crisis, to get more funding, to be a political distraction from all the other scandals. And the new czar who works for Al Gore previously, who has no Ebola background or experience, no medical training, he's an expert at divvying up tens of billions in funding to insiders to run the Ebola disaster, where literally hundreds of billions could be made, not just on the vaccine, but on the disaster itself. So go to Infowars.com or PrisonPlanet.com. Get the article with the hashtag Stop Ebola Strike. Send it out on Facebook, out on Twitter. Send our article with the videos of the general warning and others so that people understand we don't have to be powerless and just watch the federal government engage in criminal neglect by design. If you're not essential folks or people like myself that have got to be on air, self-quarantine is a test. We'll call it a national strike. Call talk radio, call Congress, call the White House, call media, send out tweets, be an activist Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to fight Ebola and to stop Ebola with the Stop Ebola National Strike. And never forget, if you're watching this transmission, you are the hope, you are the resistance.